If you've ever wondered what would happen if your favorite historical figure played your favorite game, then wonder no further. Because with the power of AI, anything is possible. Like Diogenes playing Skyrim. I'm going to tell AI Diogenes what's going on in the game, he's going to tell me what he wants to do, and then I'll go do it. I'll continue doing what he says until he beats the game. To start his journey, Diogenes needs to make his character. He decides to be an Argonian because of their connection to nature. I try my best to make an Argonian that matches his description. When it comes to naming his character, he settles on Mahes the Wanderer. Diogenes follows Rayloff into the Keep because he hates the Empire with a burning passion. Since Skyrim doesn't have classes, I let Diogenes make his own. He chooses Destruction, Restoration, Alteration, Conjuration, Sneak, Light Armor, Smithing, and Enchanting for his skills. He names his class the Wandering Sage. By letting him make a class, I can play exactly how he wants me to. Once out of Helgen, he yoinks the mage stone before heading to Riverwood to talk with Gerda. She's side-eyeing us while telling us to head to Whiterun. On the way there, we stumble across some Imperial soldiers with a poor Stormcloak prisoner. Diogenes thinks this man must have been falsely imprisoned just like he was. So, he frees the prisoner and burns the soldiers to a crisp. Then the Stormcloak runs home crying. We tell the Jarl of Whiterun, dragons are real, and he guides us to his biggest dragon fanboy ever, Faringar. Diogenes isn't impressed by this wizard and seeks a quest from some Somebody a bit more respectable. Brenuin the Beggar. When asked to steal the bottle of Argonian ale, Diogenes immediately says yes because they're hashtag beggar bros. Now that we've given a homeless man alcohol, it's time to help out a god. We talk to Azura's biggest fangirl and then get a level up from Nelikar's sheer presence. Diogenes upgrades his magicka and grabs the enchanter perk. Nelikar told us where Azura's star was, so we went there and got a level up. He upgrades his magicka again and grabs the novice rest restoration perk. These necromancers were pretty strong, so I had to bust out the hide behind a pillar and wait for my magicka to regenerate tactic. This causes us to level up. Diogenes upgrades his magicka and chooses the novice destruction perk. While purging Azura's star, he Emperor Palpatine's Malin Varen and Azura says that was so epic he can keep the star. Wow, that quest was pretty decent. Let's go do the worst one in the game. Oh, time to help out the Stormcloak's biggest supporters. While breaking and entering, we get a level up. And who says crime doesn't pay? Diogenes upgrades his magicka and nabs the Restoration dual casting perk. He delivers the evidence to Avelstein, who says, let's go shove some Thalmor nerds in a locker. Diogenes watches Avelstein carry him through a small Thalmor army before rescuing Thorald. Fralia wishes the war was over so she could see her son. She'll see him soon. While disenchanting, a wild level up appears. That was cringy, do, do not put that. A quick Magicka upgrade and Enchanter perk later, Diogenes delves into Bleakfall's Barrow. He melts some Draugr before leveling up again. He upgrades his health this time and picks up the Soul Squeezer perk. We grab the Dragon Stone and give it to Faringar. Time to fight a dragon. It was a super easy fight. We gobble up the dragon's soul and get ordered to report to the Jedi Council by Jarl Bulgruff. On our way to the Greybeards, we get a level up from slaughtering the innocent wildlife of Skyrim. After a stamina upgrade and novice conjuration perk obtainment, we chat up the Greybeards who make us yell at ghosts. But now it's time for the questline Diogenes has been hankering for all game. The Stormcloaks. We undergo their hazing ritual which involves an ice wraith before we pledge our loyalty to a group that wishes for Skyrim to only belong to the Nords. We're an Argonian. In our first mission with the Stormcloaks, we burn a bunch of Imperial soldiers before getting an ancient crown that makes whoever wear it become the High King of Skyrim. Afterwards, we roleplay as a courier and bring Jarl Balgriff Ulfric's axe. Jarl Balgriff says, Oh no, it's cool, man. I already have an axe like that. Tell Ulfric I say thank you. This is not a declaration of war. Ulfric is not happy. So he sends us to lay siege upon Whiterun, and I launch like a thousand fireballs at the city before burning a bunch of guards to cinders. Jarl Balgriff surrenders almost immediately, and Vignar Greymane, I mean Jarl Vignar Greymane, flexes on him. Ulfric yeah. is so happy we took over a city, he gives us an imperial sword. Kind of a weird reward for the Stormcloaks. Now it's time for the Fort Battle Simulator. First up on our roster is Fort Newgrad. These mongrel dogs of the Empire tasted flame from me and my Atronach. Also, I freed a bunch of Stormcloak prisoners who didn't help me fight. They were too busy gossiping instead. Now that we've destroyed one fort, all of Falkreath is ours now. I destroy the strongest enemy in the game and get a level up. Diogenes upgrades his 
stamina and gets the destruction dual casting perk. Next up on the conquer list is Markarth. Before we can attack their fort, we need to stealthily steal the steward's amulet of Talos and blackmail him with it. When I say stealthily, I mean just run past the guard on duty and steal the amulet right in front of the steward. I wake up this poor old man and begin manipulating him immediately. He mumbles something about a large shipment of weapons and silver and I run to Uncle Galmar to get a pat on the back. Coincidentally, there's a bunch of Stormcloaks right next to this large shipment and the wagon carrying the supplies broke down. So blackmailing the elderly was pointless. I loot the shipment before telling Galmar where it is and Galmar rewards me with another fort battle. I burn some Imperials, same as before, and that's two forts down, two to go. Also, Jarl Vignar says I can become the Thane of Whiterun, except I already was Thane. Maybe Jarl Balgriff was the better Jarl. It's time to conquer Morthal, even though it's a useless city with nothing but problems. Morthal hate aside, Uncle Galmar orders us to spread false information on the internet. Aw, oh, cool, cultists. We bribe a barkeep who doesn't care she's selling out the Empire for 131 gold and make quick work of the courier. After obtaining the documents, we give them to Galmar, who draws stick figures on them and tells us to give it to an Imperial Legate. Seriously, there is a 0% chance Galmar can read or write. Once in Morthal, I'll just take the long way. We give the documents to some Imperial guy and get orders to raid yet another fort. On our way to the fort, we stumble across a wise Khajiit. He tells us some funnies before we go slaughter some more Imperials. That's three forts down, one to go. Level up. Diogenes upgrades his Magicka and picks up the regeneration perk. Papa Ulfric gives us some super cool bear armor and we prepare for the last fort battle in the questline. Look, I love Skyrim, but the Civil War questline is so boring. It's mainly just go to this fort and kill the same Imperial soldiers you killed at the last three forts. I'll quit complaining because Ulfric is giving us an epic speech to go raid a city he already raided before the game even started. Also, General Tolius is a fraud. This dude sees Ulfric and just sits in the corner refusing to make eye contact. We 3v2 Tullius and Rick A before Ulfric tells us to kill Tullius. But Diogenes doesn't want to, so Ulfric does the most Skyrim thing ever before killing General Tullius. Afterwards, Ulfric rips off Homelander's speech, saying that the audience are the real heroes. Speaking of the audience being heroes, you can become my hero just by clicking that subscribe button. Diogenes does a victory disenchant sesh before leveling up. He upgrades his Magicka and chooses the Augmented Frost perk. Just selling some stuff at Bellathor's, let's step outside and- Oh no. The Stormcloak soldiers merc the cultists while my Magicka regenerates. I head out to Windhelm when a dragon attacks. Wait, what? Uh, I guess I'll hold on. Onto it? Yeah, I'll give it back after we kill this dragon. No! Rest in peace, random hunter. Anyway, time for a boat POV. You know, this Dragonborn DLC has some strong enemies, so I'm just gonna take a nap. Ah, I'm on the other side of the map. Diogenes meets the only dude he considers his equal, Neloth. Once leaving Master Neloth's, his assistant needs our help breaking this Atronach. It was pretty strong. We venture over to Fort Frostmoth to get a heartstone for Neloth, but these ash spawn are way too strong for us right now. So Diogenes realizes he needs to gain more magical prowess. And what better place for that than the College of Winterhold? I got some conjuration lessons and leveled up. Diogenes increases his magicka and gets the apprentice conjuration perk. It's time for a field trip to Sarthal. Grab the rings, break the thing, talk to the monk, beat that one guy, and ponder the orb. We report the cool orb to the archmage who sends us to the librarian. The librarian threatens us to not mess with his books before telling us he let his books get Get stolen. So we go to retrieve the missing books, battling through some mages and freeing the dude who stole the books in the first place. We get the opportunity to trade the elf for the books, but I chose violence instead. When we get back to the college, we cram for our enchanting midterm and level up. Diogenes boosts his magicka and picks the conjuration dual casting perk. Then he turns in his overdue library books before meeting back up with that monk. He talks a whole lot, I listen a whole little, then I talk to a huge glowing thing that says stuff. Then I head out to Dwarven Ruin number 4 to try and get my hands on the Staff of Magnus. This staff is supposed to make me really good at chess or something. After this annoyingly long Falmer filled dungeon, I meet an Imperial Mage. And Magnus's staff isn't even here. This quest was about as pointless as the Archmage. Speaking of the Archmage, he approaches on Kano and then BOOM! I need to find him. I walk outside and the Archmage has turned into a dragon! Nah, he's actually dead. But then he gets resurrected! And then dies again. But we have more 
more pressing issues. The town of Winterhold is under attack by these weird ice wraith reskins. I return to Mirabelle and tell her about how mad I am at these last two boring useless quests. She says spend your level up already, dummy, and Diogenes increases his magicka and he picks the Apprentice Destruction perk. Well, now that Ancano has the power to destroy the world, it's time to do an actually important quest. Returning the Golden Claw to its rightful owner. Now that the mystical Golden Claw has been returned, we can grab the much less important artifact. The Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. But it actually got turned into a note. Oh, no, wait, somebody took it. That somebody was Delphine, who gets way too close to me and asks me to kill a dragon. Before that Dungeons and Dragons sesh, I return the horn to the Greybeards, who in return just yell at me. I break anime rule number one and attack the villain mid-transformation. Afterwards, Delphine tells me how awesome and cool I am. So cool, I get invited to a party. Delphine makes me dress in some silly clothes, but Diogenes being Diogenes, the second we get to the party, he strips naked and starts making a scene. I save Melbourne's life from some Thalmor goons, and he repays me by getting himself killed trying to fist fight a frost troll. Upon returning to Delphine, she mentions some old guy who should know how to stop the literal end of the world. So I go to Riften and talk to my fellow Argonian who tells me where Esbern is for free. I fight my way through the sewers and eventually level up. Diogenes upgrades his Magicka and takes the Mystic Binding perk. Anyway, we meet up with cool guy Esbern and then bring him back to Delphine. They stand way too close to each other and then I head out to Skyhaven Temple to find out how to stop Alduin. The Forsworn were peaceful with me for some reason, so I took advantage of the situation and slaughtered them. Esbern lore dumps and Delphine reluctantly tells me to visit the Greybeards. I meet with Arngear and he throws a huge fit because I'm friends with the Blades. He instantly calms down and tells me to meet with their master Parthenax. So I climb to the throat of the world and have the first live interview with a dragon. Parthenax tells me to go get an Elder Scroll. I think the scary guy from the college would know a lot about an Elder Scroll, so I go to ask him. But he just stares at me repeating the same one line in a trance-like state. Diogenes decides he needs to finish the Mage's College questline before he can continue with the main story. So I venture over to Labyrinthian and see a whole squad of scary ghosts. I get to fight a super cool skeletal dragon before finding a really useful spell called Equilibrium. Equilibrium turns my health into Magicka, but I can just use the spell, heal, and repeat until my Magicka is filled back up. Which I need to do a lot because for some reason Bethesda thought it'd be cool in the Mage Dungeon to keep sapping your Magicka to zero. I level up, Diogenes increases his Magicka, and grabs the Augmented Flames perk. At the end of the dungeon, I fight against a lackluster Dragon Priest who gets spanked by two Falmer staffs. And once I obtain the most powerful staff known to Nern, some random Thalmor thinks he can kill me. I Uno reverse him before heading back to give Onkano a magical beatdown. Tolfdir says Onkano is gone when he's literally just walking around. Never mind. Anyway, I get named Archmage by the monks and cheese some Conjuration level ups on a Flame Antronach. Diogenes increases his Magicka and picks the Recovery perk. Now we can finally talk to the Librarian. And when we do, he treats me like I'm nothing, even though I'm technically his boss. Boss. After reading a book by Septimus Sigmus, we go to where he lives and compliment him on his writing skills. He babbles about an Elder Scroll, but I'm just excited to meet my favorite author. We head to Dwarven Ruin number 7 and then make our way into Blackreach. It looks cool, but I just sprint through it to get the Elder Scroll. Once I get the Elder Scroll, I go to the throat of the world and sit through an unskippable cutscene. Then Alduin shows up and says some stuff before fighting Parthenax while I just sit there shooting fireballs from my staffs. Eventually I beat him, but he tries to run away. I used Dragon Rend on him, but he typed TGM in the console. I go to Arngear to tell him about how I beat the World Eater in a pie-eating contest, and he tells me to trap a dragon to find out where Alduin went to cry about getting beat by a Falmer staff. I ask Jarl Vignar if I can trap a dragon at his house, and he's kinda on the fence. But he remembers that he wouldn't be the Jarl if it wasn't for me, and folds immediately. I get Parthenax to tell me Odaving's discord, and then summon him with a good old shout. Odaving ain't going nowhere, so Diogenes decides to knock out some side quests before fighting the big bad. He goes back to his favorite author and gives him a lexicon to sign. But in return, Septimus just tells us to kill one of every elf there is to open a box. I think he's an Imperial, but he's sounding a lot like a Nord. So I track down every single race of elf and get them to donate blood for an elderly man. Once I return to Septimus, he opens up the box, runs towards a book, reads the first page, and disintegrates instantly. What a legend. I read the same book and it just gives me three level ups. Diogenes increases his Magicka, Magicka again, and then his health. He picks the Apprentice Restoration perk, Summoner perk, and the Novice Alteration perk. Now it's time to 
finally delve into the DLC and get some more juicy Skyrim content. Oh, he just wants to get a Hearthstone for Neloth. I battle through a ton of Ash spawn until I find a random Imperial guy. I merc him too because I've never played the Morrowind DLC, so I don't know who he is. I find the Hearthstone, but I need a pickaxe to mine it. So I meander over to Raven Rock, talk to a dude who's missing his pickaxe, say I'll retrieve it for him, and instead yoink it and go mine some Hearthstone. I return to Neloth, who just takes the Hearthstone and gives me some gold. This really was a Morrowind fetch quest. Well, at least Diogenes will get to explore Solstheim, and oh, he just wants to fight Alduin and get the game over with already. Plato is way better. I set Odaving free and hitch a ride to the final dungeon of the game. I just run through the enemies. There's no point in fighting them when Diogenes doesn't even want to play anymore. I beat the Dragon Priest and hop into the afterlife portal. I fireball High King Torig, so I have something funny to tell Ulfric. Then I tell Soon I'm the Archmage, so I don't have to fight him. He says that's awesome. Now let's throw hands. I recruit the trio of Dragon Slayers. We shout together and then Alduin comes in for final boss time. I just keep launching ice spikes at him until he explodes. And then I found Legget Rike, who praises me, even though I'm the one that killed her. And that's the end of Diogenes' adventure in Skyrim. He sure lived up to his epic troll status by tricking me into thinking he'd do the DLC before just ending the playthrough for no reason. And he wouldn't even say subscribe for me. What a guy. Thank you all so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe if you want more AI character runs. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.